Now to some perspective from Washington. I recently had the chance to sit down with the director of the National Institute for Food and Agriculture during his visit to the OSU campus. Yeah. So Cooperative Extension Service, this very American invention, has, will be in, have been in existence next year for 100 years. It was started back in 1914. There are some amazing people at that time. There's one particular individual named Seaman Knapp. He and others of his type in America thought that it was not enough for these land-grant universities to discover knowledge that sat on a bookshelf, that it really needed to be translated into innovations. And those innovations needed to be delivered to the end users, these producers, these farmers and livestock producers, in the form of solutions to the problems that they were experiencing. So therein is the continuity between the discovery process and the delivery process. That's what Extension has been doing. So for the last hundred years, there's that demonstrated proof again that I'm, I just talked about a couple minutes ago about the fact that the, this average American farmer in the Great Plains can feed 150 people around the world. That has come about in part because of the incredible effort about the farmer and behind that farmer is this amazing enterprise of the research and the extension aspects of it as well. I think for the last 100 years, I think we've had it kind of easy because we've not had these other things that we throw at the production business, production of food enterprise. And so you've got to have our extension, cooperative extension service boots on the ground have to be that much more knowledgeable now. It's not just the fact that you are an agronomist a crop scientist, crop sciences major, or an animal science major. Now you've got to take into account this broader array of uh, disciplines and knowledge that you've got and bring that all together in a manner that's understandable, that's delivered to that end user. Not, right. not enough young people yeah. to kind of fill the, yeah. the void, I guess, that's anticipated in the agricultural sectors. Can you speak to that a little bit and kind yeah. of how your agency is looking at that and, and kind of what some of our options are in the years ahead? Yeah, you know, we got to make sure that we have young people coming in through the educational pipeline. And in, in my mind, there, there are really four domains in which we have to be concerned about. Okay, one of which is the workforce itself. That we don't have enough young people wanting to go into the agricultural enterprise. We provided funding to a couple of institutions to do a survey and in the next five years, we will have 60,000 job openings in those areas. And we're going to produce all these land-grant universities across America are going to produce a sum total of maybe about 30,000 if we're lucky. Okay? So we're going to be short. And we need to hurry up and think how we're going to fill that shortfall. A second area is the scientists that we need to, to you know, discover new knowledge that are going to be transformative on how to deal with insects and pathogens. And again, there was a survey that was done uh, by an organization called the Coalition for Sustainable Agricultural Workforce, looking at the scientific workforce. These are the PhD scientists. In the next two years, we have a shortfall of 11, over 1,100 scientific positions. These are the young people coming in to discover all this new knowledge. I don't know how we're going to do this. The third area is the extension boots on the ground. Across the United States, we have lost about a third of that boots on the ground, in part because of the economic downturn that started back in 2001. And then what happened in 2006, 2007 only exacerbated the whole thing. And we've lost tremendously that, uh, that knowledge. And I think in, in, in large measure, that global preeminence that I was referring to of the United States and the food and agricultural enterprise, in, in part, is attributable to those boots on the ground, translating that knowledge and delivering it. We don't have enough people going into that. The fourth area is we have an aging farm population. If you look at our farmers and ranchers in America, back about five years ago, we did USDA, the National Agricultural Statistics Service, did a survey, Ag Census, that said that the average age of the American farmer is about 57 years of age. And we are, we are just about completing a census right now this year. And I bet you it'll say that the average age is about 60 years of age. And we, you and I, collectively, all of us need to be concerned that we don't have enough young people wanting to go into the agricultural enterprise. So what we're trying to do as an agency 
is how do we work with the land grant universities to deploy the resources necessary, work with the states, and it's a partnership. Remember, the state government has to invest money and the federal government invests money, and we might bring in private enterprise to be investing as well, collaboratively providing the funding. So we need to provide the funding. More importantly, we gotta think about the, the education and training that we offer. Uh, it, and it really needs to be revamped as well. The third thing is the kind of research that is undertaken at institutions like uh, Oklahoma State University. How does that allow that farmer, that livestock producer, to put a few more dollars in their pockets? How do we make sure that a young person wanting to go into the farming enterprise is competitive, is able to earn a living, is able to partake of that American way of life, of you know, wanting a family and other things as well. And so what we're trying to do is to collectively work with the, the academic community and private enterprise to figure out how best to deploy our resources, both intellectual and monetary, to be able to make that happen.